Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Podcast Demastered. I'm Chelsea, and I'm here with Wade as always. And on this week's episode, we're going to bring you a little more of an in-depth look at Hogwarts Legacy. I know our last episode was our first impressions of the game, and I know it was a very, very short one, so we hope that, listeners, if you are interested in hearing more about this game, you'll enjoy this longer episode as we dive more into the story, what we've been doing in the game, likes, dislikes, all of that. And I want to also mention that we released a very short little tease of some of our initial gameplay on our YouTube channel, so we hope you'll check that out. Also, please just subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would be great. You can listen to all of our episodes there as well as check out some of our gameplay videos. We're going to be releasing more Hogwarts Legacy content as well as content for future games we play, so be sure to be on the lookout for that. But I think we need to dive right into this game. Yeah, let's do it. So I know that one of the biggest things is like, what in the world is this game about? You know, you're creating your own legacy as your own character, but like, what is the story about? So you start Hogwarts at a very interesting time. You start as a fifth year and you just dives right into the story right at the beginning. Like you get to Hogwarts right when the term is beginning. It's pretty funny because you're like the last person to be sorted into their house, <laughs> but you're a fifth year. <laughs> oh, they just like, <laughs> they're just kind of like, like, all right, come on, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> like, nobody cares, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, and then another thing that also makes you unique is that you are a very rare person that can use this ancient magic. This is something that you slowly uncover more in the game, like, what this is. Right, it doesn't It doesn't follow, like, the completely normal rules of magic, as, like, normal witches and wizards, wizards can use. Um, so you get to do some things that other people can't, like easier than they can <laughs> wouldn't be a very fun video game i guess if you had to follow all of the rules you're but special it, it you definitely know. <laughs> adds to lots of the game yes definitely i think it also just i don't know if it's because you can use the ancient magic but it's also funny because you're just like you can easily master like all the regular spells and stuff and they're like wow you're a fast learner and i'm like yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> thanks <Preach>. yeah <laughs> You know, like all the all the professors are they're throwing extra homework at you um, mm-hmm. to catch you up with with the rest of the fifth years, um, and there and there's other faculty members that are helping you out in this way or that way. Um, I think they really covered their bases pretty well on that. Mm-hmm. And th- thankfully, like there's no like um, there's no like time scheduling that you have to follow in the game. Um, you can kind of just go do whatever you want, whenever you want, whether it's day or night. You can leave Hogwarts in the middle of the night; not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of people are like, well, there should be some kind of a stealth system at night because you don't want to get caught. But it's like, hey, I'm trying to play a game here. So. Yeah. You, you still <laughs> get fine. your stealth op- <laughs> opportunities at times. It just... You absolutely yeah. do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But yeah, no, I, I don't know briefly about the ancient magic stuff. So then you find some, mm-hmm. what is they called? The group of them. The... The keepers. The keepers, yes. Mm-hmm. So you get to learn more about the keepers and they kind of, you know, help teach you more about how to use your magic and that's pretty much where the story, you know, takes off in all directions. Plenty of other content, companions, side quests, whatnot. There's a lot to do in this game. Well, speaking of companions, do you have a favorite one yet? I like Natty. I mean, I assume you've, you, like, you like Natty? Yes. I also like Natty. I can't, like, every time I get to do a mission with Sebastian or Natty, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm running over here with Natty. I love Natty. She's my favorite. And then Sebastian's like, let's go do cool boy crap and get in trouble and i'm like oh sebastian's my favorite i love sebastian <laughs> i can't keep keep it up <laughs> yeah i kind of love and hate him because i'm just like i really like you but also you just you're just trouble and i don't know if i like it <laughs> so <laughs> he at first because i'm you know like i'm a hufflepuff i'm the good boy mm-hmm. i'm like no i'm fine um but he's really grown on me a lot although i did get to the point where i could learn the cruciatus curse um oh. and i did not learn it i won't spo- i don't think i don't know if you've hit that point or not yet Chelsea. no i haven't so i won't spoil that situation for you but it, it it's a situation where somebody has to use the spell who's it going to be and i said not me <laughs> so yeah i'll have to fill you in on what i decide to do i'm not sure yeah 
I'll mm. see whatever I feel like in that situation. But that kind of reminds me about in this game, like, because there's so many different dialogue options and how you choose to interact with people and that you can kind of be like a jerk or just, you know, cheerful, helpful and everything or just kind of, I guess, kind of neutral in some ways. But it's so hard for my character to be a jerk to most people. I'm just kind of like, yeah, I'll help you with this random thing. You know, sure, I'll totally go out of my way and find this random object for you <laughs> yeah i'll go take out that troll for you like whatever man it's fine yeah i'll take yeah you know i'm a child and you're an adult i'll, I'll do the, all the hard work for you no problem like oh you need oh you, somebody's kidnapped your child in this huge <laughs> camp of bandits and goblins you don't <laughs> want to go in there and deal with that that's probably a good idea but don't worry i got you i'll do it yep. it's fine i'm 15 i'm just learning yep. magic it's fine take it yep. out i'll go into that cave <laughs> You know, it doesn't matter what's in that cave. Sure, I'll collect those items for you. Those missing oh letters, that's fine. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. You know, actually, that, that's, that specific cave, I went through that cave once before. Oh no. And then, like, way later on, I got that quest from Serona. And mm -hmm. she's like, yeah, will you go and, like, get my letters there in this cave? And I was just like, yeah, okay. And I get there, and I'm just kind of standing at the, at the cave. I'm like, pretty sure I've been through this before. And I was I was going through, and I was like, "Yep, I've finished this cave already." But I I had to go back through, of course, to to get the items and stuff like that. Yeah. Luckily, it's pretty short. Yeah, that's funny, but yeah, that's kind of a thing that kind of sucks because I feel like, at least for me, when I first started playing this game, I was just like so in awe of all of Hogwarts and everything, and I'm like, I want to explore every nook and cranny. But then there's the part where, like, you know, you can't unlock every particular chest or door or something. And then once you have those abilities, you're like, where was that again? Oh, crap. <laughs> Not time to wander again. Yes. Gotta go find that one room, <laughs> that one wall with that one door. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, it's not too much of a problem, but it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, I did that so long ago. Where is that? But mm -hmm. Or, like, better yet, when you come across something where you're like, I'm sure I can interact with this. Mm -hmm. so you throw like your four spells at it and it doesn't do anything and you're like okay later but i don't know what i need yet so mm -hmm. totally. i don't even come back and then you forget about it because it's worse they let you out of the castle and then they throw a broom <laughs> at you yeah and you're like bye hogwarts <laughs> <laughs> for real <laughs> fly around the scottish the scottish countryside for a long time mm -hmm. it's fine yeah Okay, speaking of, like, the broom flight and stuff, so I think that's pretty fun. Like, do you like to stay close to the ground, or do you like to be, like, above the trees? Oh, that's a good one. Um, or does it depend? If I'm not going a very far distance, I'll stay close to the ground and <laughs> kind of, like, skirt things and just do, like, stupid <laughs> little tricks. Like, I, will, mm -hmm. I may not even, like, I may not even be, like, um, thrusting forward, you know? I might not even be using my speed, just, like, going the normal pace. But mm -hmm. that's so much faster than running is. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. So I just do that. Like, oh, I got to walk 10 steps this way. It's okay. It takes a second to get on my broom. <laughs> I'll just do that. It's fine. Yeah, I definitely, I think I prefer, I like just want to avoid everything. So I just like, you know, go above the trees and stuff, which I still think, yeah, it's still pretty fast and everything. And it's fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but if you like fly closer to the ground, you can like see certain things that are going on that you wouldn't see by being oh, above sure. the trees. Oh, for sure, yeah. Well, like the enemies, they can see you from like, <laughs> like if you're if you're in the air, like they will see you and they will yes. shoot you out of the air. They, uh, you have to go really high above them. Like if you, I mean, you could just fly past them. You can just do mm -hmm. that too. But like if that gives you anxiety, them like seeing you on the ground, like you have to fly really high above them. That shocked me. Like like people don't look up that much. Get out of here. <laughs> they wouldn't know I was here. I don't they know. never look up. <laughs> Wait, can they shoot you off your broom? Um, they can hit you while you're on your broom. I don't. I haven't been actually knocked off my broom yet, so probably not. But um, I have okay. been hit several times by just errant spells. Oh wow! I haven't been hit yeah. yet. I've heard them, and I'm like, "Oop, better get out of here." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, "I'll just keep flying through," and they just <laughs> nail me a couple <laughs> times. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> But something, one of the things I noticed on my broom, so I know in our previous very short episode, we talked about how, like, everything is so alive, like, the castle itself, but, like, even the countryside, the little hamlets, there was this one time I was flying. I love the hamlets. Yes. And they're all, like, slightly different from each other, and, you know, have different people living there, so it's really fun. But 
one part there was like a little like field of like there was like some farming going on and i was like on my broom and i went past a scarecrow have you seen the scarecrows yet in the fields (laughs) yes (laughs) yes oh my gosh they move they're alive they like shook off all the birds and scared all the birds away it was amazing (laughs) like a real scarecrow is like doing their real job (laughs) yes yep for real being real because i like i was like did that thing move and then I slowly looked at it somewhere. I'm like, yes, it did. That's amazing. I love Heck this. Yeah, it did. <laughs> no, I, I love just kind of like if, if I'm flying and um, like above the trees, because if there's trees, I'm, I'm, I'm out of there. I'm out of the trees. Um, mm-hmm. But then like if it opens up in like a valley or something, no, I'm down there like skirting along the grass and stuff, like just kind of taking in this all the greenery and stuff like that. And then like, of course, oh, there's a Merlin trial. guess I got to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I did finally figure out all the tricks to the Merlin trials. Mm. So I'm like, I'm set with them, but there were some when I'd come across them for the first time. I'm like, I see the pieces. What am I supposed to do with them? <laughs> so yeah. frustrating. I'm like, you know what? I just don't have that spell yet. It's fine. I'll come back. And I did. And it was fine. Yeah, I think, yeah, there's a couple I haven't quite figured out yet. But the other ones, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I know how to do this. And also, as I'm doing the game, I'm just like... I guess because I'm a Ravenclaw or whatever, all you stupid Slytherins are like, these Merlin trials are so hard. Or I'm like, why has nobody done these yet? <laughs> <laughs> why are these just now like... Yeah. Why am I just now activating these? Why haven't yes. Why haven't other people done these? <laughs> yeah. Like the first lady we run across, she's like, oh, I think this is how you activate it. And I'm like, did you not try? Like that introduces us to the Merlin trials. <laughs> and then she's like, okay, bye. I'm going to do more research. And I'm like... You could do research on this one right now. And you do don't have to me. do research. We're here. We're doing it right now. Yes. <laughs> I am your research. <laughs> <laughs> I will do this for you. Yes. Hold on a second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The, the people in the countryside, like, they make me laugh so much. <laughs> a lot of it's not for the best of reasons. Like, some of their accents are so, like, thick and not... <laughs> I don't know. Not a positive thing, I think. <laughs> I'm just like, geez, man. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, but at least, like, it's, like, pretty much all, like, each character is unique, though. So that is at least cool. Oh, absolutely. And their names. My God. I don't think I've even caught half their names. <laughs> oh. It was probably because your brain was just like, what was that? Not important. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're not processing that. Probably. That's okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> I hope I hope they're like era specific names because good God, some of them are so complicated. <laughs> mm-hmm. I would hope so. Speaking of being like era specific and stuff, that reminds me of like the clothing that you can wear in this game. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love all the clothes. Yeah, this was a game I was surprised where I'm like I need more variety. I need more things. I want to be able to pick more specific things, and I'm like I never thought I would be into a game where like I wish I had this particular outfit. But I do love looking at all the different clothes you can unlock. I unlock so many clothes. Like, I have so many different, like, like not student outfits, like, real mm-hmm. clothes. And yes. I just can't, like, I have to be wearing some form of the student outfit. I just can't change it. I, it just doesn't feel right. Because <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm running around the school or, like, I'm going to class. Like, I, I need to, like, be wearing my robe. What What is this? I get that. I thought I was going to be like that, which I was in the beginning. And I was like, no, I can only strictly wear the school robe. But I'm like, nope, some of these outfits are cool. I'm like, forget that. I'm the special student. I'm going to wear whatever the heck I want to. <laughs> Clearly, I can do what I want. Yes. So. <laughs> Nobody can, stopped me yeah. yet. I can go wherever <laughs> I want, do whatever I want. I can wear whatever I want. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, though. Like, I know that's yeah. a Hogwarts rule, and I'm absolutely breaking it right now. Mm-hmm. And let me just spend, like, half my time in the Forbidden Forest. No one can stop me. <laughs> yeah, what are they going to do? <laughs> yeah. Let me fly around. Yeah. wander over here next to this troll. What are they going to do? Kill the troll? Nope. Yeah. Nope, Only that's I my job. That, apparently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so many of the characters, like, comment on the fact that this, like, small army of dark wizards and goblin rebellions are after you. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, wow, that sounds dangerous. And then like, let's move on. I need you to go find these potion ingredients yeah. for me. And, and your character too is just kind of like, yeah, it's, you know, I guess it's just the thing. Yeah. Like, But like, if that was Harry, like, you know, if, if, a, if a small 
act very active army of dark wizards was after harry like stationed around hogwarts in the same way Mm -hmm. you know like it would have been the hugest of deals yep like nobody's leaving the castle (laughs) like people like teachers are going to be going out at night to like kill some people like they're not just going to sit there and be like wow that sucks guess you better be just a little extra careful when you leave hogwarts in the middle of the night i suppose (laughs) Yeah. Well, we do have a different headmaster and we could say, quote, this is a a different time because this is the late 1800s and we're dealing with the lovely headmaster who many people Uh, who have read the books may be familiar with the name Phineas Nigellus Black. You know, like I it's so good to get more on him (laughs) um, from like the little bit we got in the books. But like, I am not shocked. (laughs) Yeah, like how much of a jerk he is. Mm-hmm. And I haven't even dealt with him all that much yet. Like, I know there's going to be a point where I really am dealing with him a lot more, but like, yeah, ugh. no, ugh. we've already gotten a, enough of him to be like, yep, that's that's on brand. No, thanks. <laughs> and you never see him out like Mm-mm. he's never out with the kids. He's never swandering the building or anything. Cause he hates kids. Like, what? Yeah. What kind of but, headmaster. Is yeah. That? yeah. I'm like, but he's the headmaster. So figure that one out. <laughs> Status. What did he teach before? Do you remember? I don't know. Did he? Surely he was a teacher. I was going to say, surely. was he even a teacher? He might have just gotten a job because of the name. Who knows? I can't remember the specifics with that, but no, he's just a great, terrible character. And one of the things I think a lot of people were disappointed with this game was that, you know, you can fly in a room, but you can't play Quidditch. And so they quickly try to, like, at the beginning of the game, when he's giving Five a speech, blame he's it like, on Black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's his, it's his fault. He was it's like, it's fine. due to that injury last year or whatever, we are canceling Quidditch. <laughs> We're like, okay, so maybe you do care about students somewhat, or is it just with, like, it tarnishes your name because students get injured while you're on the job? Probably that. Because he's lazy and doesn't want to deal with it. True. It's like, one less thing I have to worry about. <laughs> I'm looking up and seeing if he, if he did teach. I'm not seeing anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, no, he did teach, but it doesn't say what he taught. Oh, okay too bad well, it must have been the best class ever best class to skip i guess <laughs> it's poor, probably poor defense kids. against the dark arts let's be real yeah probably showing off the dark arts <laughs> but thank god we have our defense against the dark arts teacher mm-hmm. she's awesome yeah like all the teachers they're so cool yeah i was gonna say yeah let's talk about those teachers because yeah i like them all they're cool professor sharp i wasn't sure if he was supposed to be somebody that we liked or we're not supposed to like because he's the mm-hmm. potions teacher, and we're used to not liking yeah. the potions teacher. And he mm-hmm. is, he's still very, like, strict and, like, no sense of humor, down-to-business kind of guy. Um, but he's also, uh, like, a very powerful XR. Yeah. So he's seen some stuff, so he's serious. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do like him. I do like him. Did you did you take that small quest during the first class where you went to help Gareth Weasley make his potion and, like, steal the stuff out of his office? No, I told Weasley no. I was like, <gasps> oh, yes, I did. Tell I was me like, about that. Tell me, tell me what happened. Because okay. I did the opposite. I helped him. Okay. When he approached me, I was like, mm, he's a pre <laughs> uh, Fred and George Weasley right there. I'm like, yep, I know what I'm getting into. Nothing but trouble. I'm sure he has good intentions and he's going to be a very successful wizard. But I was just like, no, I'm the new student. I don't want to get in trouble with this professor. I'm just getting the, only the items I, you know, was supposed to get. Now, did I actually take that item out of the storeroom or whatever? <gasps> I did. <laughs> you kept it for yourself. <laughs> yes, I did. So apparently I was very selfish with that. So it's really funny. So if you if you tell him no and you keep it for yourself and you talk to the prof- professor, he's like, I saw you took that item, but you know, you can have it for now. You're just starting out with all your ingredients. Enjoy it, whatever. And he's like, I saw you talk to Weasley over there and you know, thanks for not, you know, like losing my trust in you so that's what happened to me (laughs) huh okay i um i I gave him the item and i gave it to the weasley and in his potion like shot off like fireworks and stuff at the end of class um and sharp was just kind of like yeah that doesn't shock me like way to go dingus (laughs) and then at the end of class he's just like well like i saw you go in there and take that item and and give that to him um, so I'm just going to ask that next time you use better judgment and we're lucky mm. that that's all that happened. Um, and I think, I think I, I think I lost some points from Hufflepuff for that. 
I think he well mm. and Gryffindor because he got he got Gareth too. But he was like he was a lot more chill. Like if Snape that had been Snape, <laughs> that probably wouldn't have gone over so well. Detention, but um, absolutely for a year. <laughs> um, for a year. Um, but but he was like he was just kind of like you know first impressions are hard to break. Um, so work hard from now on, kind of thing. Mm. And I felt really bad. I was like, I I knew I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good Hufflepuff boy. I promise. <laughs> Well, so after you felt that way about him, like, did you see him again in the hall? And he was like, can you help me? So how'd you react to him? <laughs> what'd you and tell him? I, I, hel- I helped him. I didn't ac- actually expect to get to, like, use that, that um, secret. So it was really cool to get to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think it's funny. So at the end of Quest, so this is the one mm-hmm. where I was a jerk. I have not been, like, a jerk to anybody. But to him, I'm like, you're just trying to get me into trouble. Like, go away. So at the end of the quest, sometimes you could just be like, you know, here's the item or, you know, I think I, you owe me something in return for this or like, mm-hmm. I think there's like another option. So I totally did. I'm like, I like worked hard to get this item for you. You owe me money. So <laughs> you get yeah. I'm like, yes, <laughs> but that's honestly yeah, the I, only I person. I haven't made anybody do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there was, you know, there's another quest. Um, the one where like the guy was, they were starting that herbology business. And he's like, he got, he got um, shut out of the business as it was starting, like with his partner. So he's just like, well, because he, he thinks I'm like volatile and, and dangerous to work with. Well, I'll show you volatile. Will you go steal his like precious plant for me? And then I'll just use it to start my own business. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> oh so I, I snuck in there and I, and I, and I gave it to him and I was just kind of like, okay, here you go. Bye. And he's just like, you're a really good kid. And I'm like, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's <that> questionable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So next time I may not and just see what happens because it's something I haven't done. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you get some really cool like loot out of like going and sneaking into the place. But um, yeah. Yeah. It's just cool because, yeah, you can, you know, there's plenty of opportunities to make your own choices and choose how you react to people. So it's a lot of fun to really play your own way. <sighs> <laughs> just so much to talk about this game <laughs> i know and just half the time i get on and i'm just like okay so i'm gonna focus on like side quests or maybe i'll go do this many like merlin trials or scat mm-hmm. up this area and finish all the stuff in this area and i realized yesterday that there's actually a whole section of the map that we don't have access to yet mm. like down in the southeast of the map oh um, yeah like i don't i found like where the entrance is but like it's like a it's a huge like goblin base to get through it's like a ton like a mining tunnel to go through Mm -hmm. and i'm like i bet i can probably like fight my way through this and then like you know unlock the fast travel points and then i can just kind of hop back and forth from now on i bet there's a lot of enemies and a lot of trolls Oh gosh. And that's just like before you even get into the tunnel. So I was just like, I'll just let the story take me there, I think. Yeah. Hopefully you'll we'll, get some help we'll with get that stuff then later. With the story. Yeah. Mm, I hope so cuz it was a it was a ton of enemies. Yeah. It's a ton of enemies. And my my protecto um isn't that like precise yet. <laughs> I get that. Can't counter absolutely everything. Yeah. Well, that, like should we talk about some of the combat and the spells in this game? Yeah, let's do it. Are you having a, a good time with the combat so far? I th- a pretty good time. I think it's it's a lot to work with in a lot of ways because mm-hmm. you can, you know, you have a lot of freedom to choose how to map your spells because you get, because you originally, like, the first spells you can see, you can do, like, four spells, but then you can kind of, like, map it so you can have, what, like, 16 different options or whatever. But mm-hmm. it's always hard to remember, like, when I'm really into combat, like, I... It's a lot of memorization. Plus, like, you just had the little it pictures. Is. So you're supposed to remember yeah. which one is which. So it does take a lot of getting used to. And I think when you play it regularly, like, it becomes a little bit more natural. But it's been a little bit since I played it. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to be rusty again. But when you get things right, it is very satisfying. I just have to always remember because not only do you have your basic spells, but you also can use your ancient magic when you fill up those meters. And mm-hmm. I should utilize that more. I don't utilize it as much as I do. I think it's just because it's so chaotic and destructive. Like, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> or like, it's I don't like want to worse waste than this the whole, killing like, thing on one person. <laughs> like, I don't. I want to save it for like a bigger guy. Yeah, I understand. Yes, one hundred percent. I'll just, I'll just push through it. It's fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. But 
it is so satisfying when you get it right when you use like the protego spell and like deflect and then like oh my gosh and stupefy the enemies oh my gosh Ugh, that is so it cool. is it is so rewarding yeah but it is i think it's a little bit tricky in some ways like it's a lot to memorize in a lot of ways or a lot of things you have to do because then you also have to like dodge things as well and then some of those attacks you know you can't use mm-hmm. your shield charm against so you have to dodge no matter what and i don't know it's a lot to work with i'm surprised like i'm glad i guess in some ways that the combat has a lot more to it but you know i wouldn't be complaining if it was also very simple too so right <laughs> <laughs> um if if there's a sequel game i wonder like how they'll evolve the combat from that point Mm-hmm. because i'm yeah. sure they'll they'll add to it they'll make like alterations and stuff i wonder what they would do to to add more to it interesting yeah, I almost would love it, kind of, if there was a slight, like, slowdown in your fighting when you were switching between, like, the different, like, spells you have mapped. Like, because, mm-hmm. like, in, it reminds me kind of, like, in the Horizon games where, like, you can switch between your ammo and, like, the screen kind of slows down with your enemies and, like, it gives oh, you a little bit second to switch between That would be super things. helpful. Yeah, so I would love something like that, maybe. Sometimes, like, when you need to switch, like it's just explosions and chaos going on so you're just kind of <laughs> yes. like slamming on that dodge button while you're trying to like switch your spells over oh god ah yeah. no thank you yeah no it's like which spell is this? i'm like i don't know i'm just gonna use it i don't know dodge whatever <laughs> just spam it i don't care yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes i kind of do spam all the spells <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i i yeah. did just set up one of my bars um to do like a combo like all four mm. like go into each other um and that's oh. like super nice like i use i use um accio to pull in okay um oh gosh um oh, i can't remember the name of the spell where it sends them straight down oh not to pull so um oh my gosh yeah not yeah. the one that's not to pull so but i slam them into yeah. the ground and they bounce so like they kind of stay in the air descendo there we go descendo there we go and then i freeze them and mm. then since they're right next to me i use incendio to burn them which they take extra damage from because they're frozen Mm -hmm. and then they just go flying it's fantastic most of the time that kills them in one hit it worked out really well and and then if if i need some time to charge then i just go to one of my other bars and like i have to pull so on that so like if i need to push people away Mm -hmm. um because i i got the like to pull so mastery trait so when you depulso mm, okay. somebody, it also it shoots a shockwave out from you. So if there's a bunch of enemies, it'll push everybody away. Okay, yeah. Gives you some breathing room. Yeah, I like those little additional ones you can do that add more, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like extra traits and stuff to those spells. Yeah, I don't have that one unlocked, but I think I have a lot of the other ones unlocked, which are really cool. And no, that was really smart to map them all to have that combo. I haven't really messed around to see those different combos and everything, but... That's definitely a good way to handle that. It's like seeing your spells work together like that. It's just like gives so you goosebumps. Cool. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so satisfying and so intense. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, so it seems like you really like that combo. Are there any spells that you really like by themselves? Or um, like to just use? yesterday, I used I learned Bombarda, mm, mm-hmm. which is like the exploding spell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've been using that on people a lot um i'll just like run into a fight i'm just like oh okay bombard <laughs> and they just any of this any of the few spells that just send the people soaring i just find it so funny because i'm like well you're dead <laughs> the or like just the amount of things that you can do in this game where you're like i absolutely just murdered somebody and there is no question about it <laughs> yep there's a lot there of that going of on yeah like ooh. Oh my gosh, I think it's so funny, like, the, uh, well, it's funny, because, yeah, we're talking about people, like, totally being dead, no, um, when, like, you're sneaking through some of the areas, and, like, all mm-hmm. these, like, wizards are on, like, cliff sides, and you use Patricius Totalis <laughs> on them, and they just tumble they down off hill. the cliff? Yes, and that, that cliff, I'm like, so it's like, no, well, like, you're so super dead. paralyzed, and now you're falling off a cliff, so have fun with that. Yeah, yeah, you can't feel anything, like, you can't do anything about that, you're just, yeah. And then the ones, yeah, where you use, like, Depulsa or something, and you make them just go flying off a cliff or off the edge or something. I'm like, yeah, and they don't reappear. They didn't apparate. So I'm like, yeah, I think they're dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> But they're dark wizards. I guess we're just not talking about it. It's fine. Yeah, I, get, they made I guess choices. it's fine. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I guess if you don't use the unforgivable spell, like, you know, apparently that's fine. I'm fine. Yep. You can do whatever you now, want. I, I'm not learning the unforgivable spells, but if you go into one of the, um, like the dark the arts arena things, the dark, mm-hmm. dark arts arena. Yeah. Um, if you do that, you, you will have them. In fact, I went in there on, like, it was kind of on accident because I didn't realize what I was unlocking was the dark arts arena. I go in there and they're like, okay, wave one. And I was like, whoa, what? And then I looked at my hot bar and it's like whatever, like my main square spell was like, okay. Uh-huh. But then the other three had actually all been replaced with the unforgivable curses. Oh. And I was like, oh, it's just this arena. So I like, I was like, I'll just beat the, beat the fight. And then I'll like leave and go do the rest of the story that I was doing. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's like six waves, I think. And I got to the oh, sixth wow. wave, but the sixth wave was like dark wizards and goblins and there was like three trolls and i was just like nope (laughs) like just freaking kill me it's fine but i did get to play around with the unforgivable curses during those fights Mm -hmm. although like i'm not i'm not putting any traits into like powering up those curses Mm -hmm. at all Mm -hmm. um so for me the unless it was avada kedavra they they seemed kind of weak um because you know that instantly kills anything whatever you're fighting but the other two spells, they, like, Crucio, it doesn't, it, at least it didn't seem to, like, actively hurt them. It just, like, cursed them. It gave them, like, a special curse mark. And then you, mm-hmm. I know there's traits that you can get that, like, people with that curse mark, they, they'll they take extra damage from this, mm-hmm. that, and the okay. other. And then Imperius. You have to add those traits. You have to add the traits. And then the Imperius curse, like, it was, I could use it on somebody and they'll start, like, fighting for me. But then, like, if you accidentally hit them, that gets rid of that. They'll go back to fighting you. So it was interesting. Wow. Yeah. It's huh. interesting. Yeah. Because I was like, I did run across that arena, but I was like, I don't know what happens when I, like, use it. So I will come back another time and deal with that. So maybe I'll just have to go in there just to mess around with those, see how they mm-hmm. work. But, yeah, it's very interesting. Thing of spells. So I guess... I don't know. I I can just be kind of, like I said, chaotic and just use a lot of them. But I think the one spell I really like, of course, it's like a very violent spell. And my character is like, I can't be bad characters, at least. And even in <laughs> this game right now, like it has to be bad. <laughs> but of course, like I use the spell that like I think Sebastian taught us. Uh, what was that? Uh, Defendo <laughs> slashes is the across the spell. Oh, oh, no, no, that one. OK. Yeah. It's like a yeah, fiery slash across the too. <laughs> Yeah, woof. It's very satisfying to use that though in combat. It really. It is. Well, and you can you can unlock a trait for that that like the big like slashy thing, like the, mm-hmm. the energy you know they used in it. If if it hits multiple people, it'll actually damage. That's so very useful. I I unlocked that, and that's been very helpful in like fights with tons of enemies. They'll all come running in, and I'll just be like defendo, <laughs> like goodbye. Yeah. Yep. Take them all out. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's a very useful, very powerful spell. So definitely one that's at like the top of my list to use. <laughs> any other fel- uh, spell favorites on your end i don't know like i just use them when I, can. I mean i think like i think we've kind of already talked about like the ancient magic itself like using those mm-hmm. like and you never know what's like really going to happen when you use it sometimes to the enemies and you just watch it happen and you're like dang what <laughs> like that's brutal like you pick up a guy and you're just like slamming him into the ground <laughs> yeah or a bolt of lightning um, just striking or, them dead. <laughs> like, that's fine. Um, have you used it yeah. on a spider yet? I don't know. I guess because does someone one of them like like ter- like transfigures it into something else, or is it just a spider? Like, or what happens um, with the spiders? I, I fought dark wizards where the, it ends up transfiguring the dark wizard into like a chicken. Yes. Yes. Okay. So with the spider, there's one specific for spiders though, where um you bring it over to you, but you also shrink it at the same time, and then you just step on it. <laughs> Okay, maybe yeah. I haven't noticed that specifically, but that's that's wild. I'm like, I've used them. Oh, now I have to pay it more attention. What happens? Yeah, some of some of them have special animations, like in with goblins and dark wizards. Sometimes, like you just kind of make them explode in light. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, damn, this is brutal <laughs> magic. Like, I guess it is brutal magic. <laughs> yeah, Ugh. but you know, we're not using the unforgivable curses, so I guess we're all good. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if it's fine. I we're just 15 years it, old. <laughs> Only I can use it, so if I don't use it, it's yeah. just going to go to waste, so... <laughs> True. I'll just do it, it's fine. We're unlocking its full potential, you know, no big deal. <laughs> so, yep, that's lots of going on with the spells, the combat, I mean, 
I think it's pretty smooth in general. I think sometimes I get a little stuck on like how the spells have cooldowns and everything, but it's really nice that you're able to like dodge and use, you know, Protego and stuff. And you can also, also can unlock that like, basically that dash too, when you use dodge. Gosh, I, I unlock that forever ago and I hardly <laughs> ever use it. And yeah. sometimes if I'm trying to get on my broom, <laughs> I'll just like press L1 real fast and then I'll hit circle too soon. Um, mm. And I'll end up just kind of like launching myself forward with that dodge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and several times I have launched myself straight off of a cliff with the dodge. Gosh. <laughs> which luckily it's fine. You could be falling through the air and you could still get on your broom. Like it's fine. It's just <laughs> funny. I'm like, my, I'm like, I'm going to do this big graceful jump into the air and get on my broom. <laughs> no, I'm going to like do this fall. <laughs> apparition dodge thing twi- 10 feet over the edge of the cliff. <laughs> It just kind of plummet to my dad. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, should we move on from the spells and combat and talk <sighs> about? We probably should. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so for the rest of it, like, just what's something that you just have loved so far? I mean, like I said in our prior episode, I mean, it just, it's finally playing like a Harry Potter game where you get to be your own wizard and do what you want. Like, mm-hmm. that is just something that I had always wanted, and it's just so exciting to be able to do that. Like, not even just, like, being your own character. Like, specifically, yeah, because you get to, like, actually choose what your character looks like, give them a name, which nobody ever addresses you by your name. You're just like, hey, student, basically. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, you know, it's fine, whatever. And then just being able to explore everything, and that, like, Hogwarts itself, like we already said, like, it's, like, pretty much, like, fully explorable, like... It's huge. So much to do. And then the bonus fact of like, you get to go to Hogsmeade. You get to just visit the surrounding areas. Like, it's just. Mm. I apparently, love Hogsmeade. I, yes. I just, I love this game, just has so many things that I have longed for in a game like this. I um, finished up the quest that you're currently on. Mm-hmm. Um, like, go with going with Natty to get to save the hippogriffs. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the the quest ends, and when you gain control back, you're on the hippogriff, and you get in mm-hmm. the and the game takes you for a fly. Oh, okay. And you you just follow Natty, but like it's it's a long fly, so you can just like all this chaos and stuff, and then all of a sudden you're just kind of like airborne, and you get to like move the camera, and you you can control the hippogriff flying around, and I took so many like screenshots of oh, just man. the views and stuff, and it's just. They really nailed it on a lot of these things. And you can kind of get the same feeling on a broom, sort of. Mm-hmm. But when yeah. you're on a creature, like the Hippogriff or a Thestral even, um, and, and, and the Hippogriffs and the Thestrals, they all move differently. They all behave and act and move differently than brooms do. Oh, that's cool. Like even between the Hippogriff and Thestral, they're not the same animal and they don't fly the same. They have different speeds. They do things better and different than the other. Like, I'm just sitting there like my jaw is dropped and I'm just like hitting that screenshot button. It's just, it's just so beautiful and it was such a wonderful feeling to get. And now you can just go do that whenever you want. (laughs) Hmm. Yeah. Sometimes when the sun starts to set, I'm like, oh, let's let's hop on this or that and let's, let's just watch. Let's just fly over the forest and let's just watch it. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, that's something with the game too. Like, so as you progress through the main story, like the seasons change and so... Like, because the seasons actually change, so does your environment, so does the outdoors, so do, like, the leaves change and everything, like, and it's just all the detail they put into that, and then as well as, like, day-night cycle, so it's just so beautiful, all the details and everything, depending, like, what time of day or what time of year, it's just, it's not only is it a cool game where you get to be your own character or Hogwarts student and explore, but you, like, it's a beautiful environment to explore. It is. I just hit winter, um, and I haven't really, Mm -hmm. like... I haven't really run around to, like, look at a lot of the changes, like, especially in the castle, because the, cha- the castle will change, too. You know, like, in the fall, they put up decorations for Halloween and stuff. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And now that it's winter, they've put up decorations for Christmas, and it's just, it's just so excellent. Mm-hmm. So Walking wonderful. into the Great Hall, like, when it's decorated for anything is just... Oh, my just, gosh. Oh, God, it's just so amazing. Seeing the sea yes. of floating candles above the tables. Mm. Mm-hmm. I wish you could, like, sit down at the tables and, like, like have a small little cutscene where you're enjoying a meal or something. That would be nice. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you can, like, eat random food throughout the game, but 
<laughs> which is also hilarious. Just let mm-hmm. me just steal your food right here and eat it. <laughs> Absolutely. I like it's going to hog in, into Honeydukes and they have yes. like all the platter set up and like, excuse me while I just like eat all of this cake. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I can eat this for free. Perfect. I'm going to, you know, eat as, eat as much as you I want to, but it's just, what a good I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, because, yeah, like, uh, Honey Dukes and that, it's not, like, a real store where you actually buy anything and, like, the things don't cost money. They're just fun to watch, you know, what happens mm-hmm. to your character when you eat it. Just little... Right. <laughs> so. all, the, all the treats that do different things. Like, the very first mm-hmm. thing that I found were the, um, I think they were the Fizzing Whisbies. Mm-hmm. And I, and I was just like, oh, that's the candy that, like, makes you levitate. And I ate it. And then, like, up you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh my god! And then I found like the pepper, the pepper imps. Oh, mm-hmm. that make you breathe fire. <laughs> yes. Oh, those are great. It was such a good time. Like running through that store, I'm just like, this is like little kid me would be so happy right now. Mm-hmm. For real. And then like you can kind of do the same thing like in uh Zonko's, the joke shop. You can like kind of mm-hmm. mess around with the items in there. And if you go to the second floor, there's a button that says like, do not press. Do not press the button. <laughs> uh huh. Of course, you I have to cross it, it a lot of times. Yep. Uh huh. Uh huh. Same. <laughs> it's just funny. There's I I love how there's those yeah things you can interact with, but I understand like being able to sit down in certain places. I also kind of wish you could interact more in your dorm room, like in your bed or like with yeah. other items. Mm-hmm. There's like a few things to do, but like it's not it's not that much. Yeah. So it's funny. It's really interesting, like how different like the dormitories are. Like, because I think, like, if you've ever seen, like, you know, the Harry Potter movies and everything, like, you are very well acquainted with, like, what Gryffindor looks like and everything. And you've seen a little bit of, like, Slytherin, but, you know, they really took a lot of time, care, and detail into this game and just making, like, all the houses unique. It's really funny as a Ravenclaw because the, like, the dorm room I have, it's bunk beds. Well, like, none of the other ones are like that. It's so weird. (laughs) So there's five sets of bunk beds in in the room? I think it's or there's just three... five beds total. No, I think it's three, maybe three sets of bunk beds. So it's six total or whatever. I think at least around that. I think that seems about right. But you can explore like one of the other dormitories, like and at least in Ravenclaw you can. And then that one, I'm like, it must be. I think it's like for like the next year, like the six years or something. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. you get your own beds as a six year. Okay, so apparently us Ravenclaws have to have bunk beds until we. Yeah, go to... how weird. <laughs> yeah. How bizarre. I don't have that problem in Hufflepuff. No. Although in Hufflepuff, there's only four people to a room. Mm. Which, like, you know, in, in with Harry, he had five all yeah. the way through. He had the same five, same dorm everywhere. Um, and, and I have four people. There's me and three other people. And I'm just like, like, it's not adding up. <laughs> there should be five. <laughs> yeah, I understand. It's like, I could be wrong on how many bunk beds are in there. But I thought it was at least three. But yeah, it's just... It's really funny. I wonder if the rooms like magically reconfigure themselves depending on the year and how many students there are or something. You would have to think there's something like that so that there's a bed for everybody. Probably. I mean, it's it's said like with with the with the common with the well, with the dormitories in general, um, they're like the room of requirement sort of, where they mm. like they're, they're they're always prepared for who they have in there kind of thing. Um, not that not to sense. the amazing extent of the room of requirement, but like they they it prepares itself in a way makes sense which room of requirement that is you know something you are introduced to that becomes a big deal with this game kind of like your little home base they did such a just fantastic job with the room of requirement holy crap i i try not to go back there too much (laughs) because (laughs) when i go back i can stay there for a long time i'm like no i need to like stay out i need to go do things like important things but I have just had such a fun time, like, decorating and changing it around and stuff. Mm-hmm. Because not only that, yeah, you can decorate it with so many things, but then you can also utilize that space for, like, all your potions, your plants you're growing, and mm-hmm. your creatures you're caring for. Heck yeah, the creatures. Uh-huh. I, I started collecting the creatures, like, the second that they're like, here, here's the bag. And I was like, bye, and I went out into the world and like found like the little areas where all of the, where they all are and I filled my bag up and they're like well you can only have four species of of animal and I was like that's a bummer yeah lame 
so you have to you have to unlock the other two vivariums before you can put more beasts in there mm. but i have them all unlocked now um thankfully nice. so i can have up to 12 beasts i suppose but like you can have one species but then like that one species you can have like however many of each that you want in there but it can each mm -hmm. vivarium can only hold four different species so okay interesting mm -hmm. yeah. but there are more than 12 species of beasts that you can collect so you got to make choices <sighs> either way <sighs> those are the choices i don't want to make in that game <laughs> I, I want know. them all i mean you can Collect just you can store the other ones in your bag and you can switch them out and stuff. Yeah. But I love like I'll go in there every every time I go to the room of requirement I got to go into each of my vivariums and um, I have like an auto feeder set up so all I have to do is mm. brush brush the animal nice. and then they give me they give me their whatever piece that they give me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I did un I cool. did just unlock the ability to breed the animals to breed the magical mm. beasts. So I, ha I need to go find uh, I need to go find another unicorn. I only have one. Um, so I need to go find mm -hmm. another one so I can have little baby unicorns running around. <laughs> Aw. Yeah. But yeah, that's like another component of the game. I guess you have to actually go out into the countryside and stuff and actually catch the animals. Mm -hmm. And then bring them back. It's not just simple <laughs> like buying them from a shopkeeper or something. <laughs> Although you can sell them to a shopkeeper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they're like, well, there's poachers out there. So like, please, please go catch the beasts because they'll be safer with you. And then sell them. And then you're just like, <laughs> like, well, I'm just going to breed them. And then I take the babies and I'm going to go sell the babies. <laughs> Gosh. Because <laughs> they give you so much money for that. And they're just like, oh, that's cool. That's fine. It's, <laughs> it's totally like, what normal. About me? What about me being a safer option than the poachers? Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. Our character is very <laughs> questionable, you know. Very just shady. killing people, you know, Very shady. breeding animals, selling them. <laughs> Nobody knows, though. It's not like people are there when it happens, so it's okay. Oh, okay. People don't know what they <laughs> won't hurt them. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, gosh. But, you know, we're only we're only so far through this game. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's plenty, plenty more that we haven't even thought of yet. Oh, yeah. It's, so much could happen. Yeah. yeah. And I'm glad it's taking me a long time to get through the game. Mm -hmm. Like when a game takes a while because there's too much stuff to do, I'm that's to that's totally fine with me. Like make it last because I I from what I hear, um there's not really a post game. Mhm. Mm like there's nothing that opens up after you're done with the game. Like you can 100% the game and then that's it. And they even said like last week that there are currently no plans for DLC. Um, hmm. I'd be shocked. I mean, they still have to finish development on um, the last gen versions and then the mm -hmm. Switch version. So, like, there's probably nothing in development right now for it. But I just, I don't see them going, okay, here's this game that's breaking records and is getting amazing yeah, reviews. And then, like, we're going to drop it. I, I say that it is WB, so there's no telling the mess that they're in right now, but... But the money just, they're making off this game. <laughs> yeah, they have to. They have to be. They have to give us something. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, and we started this game as a fifth year, so mm -hmm. there has to be more of the story that they're gonna want to tell in the future. Right. I because they're starting as a fifth year, I just assumed that there would it would be a trilogy of games. Yeah. Each taking place in year six and seven. Mm hmm. So I really hope so. I mean, we'll see how the story ends. We'll see if there's room for growth and stuff like that. But. Hmm. Yeah, we shall see. And, you know, maybe, it's like you said, yeah, it's just too early for them to announce DLC, especially because, yeah, because the only versions that have been released are the ones for the, the PS5, the Xbox Series S and X, and the PC, so. Indeed. Yeah, so, because the next versions will come out will be the, the PS4 and the Xbox One, right? I think yeah. that's in April. April. Possibly the 4th, I can't remember off the top of my head, and then the Switch version doesn't come out until... Like June? J July? Yeah, I was like, it's... June, Somewhere July, I can't remember. So. But I kind of like, mm -hmm. at the moment, I kind of want to buy it from my Switch. Mm. Like, I'm not much for double dipping on, like, huge games like this. Because, you know, 70 bucks is 70 bucks. Yeah. But I kind of want to see how it plays on the Switch. Yeah. Okay, so it's coming out on the Switch on July 25th. So, definitely a bit of ways for now. Oh, they should have made it a week later and just do it on Harry's birthday. I know. Well, but that's what I was They never release things on Harry's birthday. Ever. No. Well, and I always thought this game was going to release, like, on September 1st or something. You know, start of the term. 
But, you know, hey, I'm glad I didn't have to wait until September to play this game. But, That's you know, fair. the game was supposed to come out, like, last year, the year before, the year before that. But <laughs> I'm glad with the final product that they have shared with us. So that's great. Yeah. We've got it now, and that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. And we're eating it up. Yes. Now, I know we've had a lot of praise for this game. Lots of things we've talked about we've enjoyed. Are there any things that we wish could be approved upon? Any other things that we hope they'll either, you know, add another patch or an update to or maybe a potential sequel has them has um, i it. just want i just hope that there is more content in this series one way or the other mm-hmm. the good news is is that if they do sequels like the sequels won't take that long to make because they have, they have the <laughs> they have the world they have all of these resources they've already mm-hmm. created they'll, they'll make those resources better of course but i hope they just don't leave it alone afterwards yeah and and if there's like a character import that you can do mm. that would be freaking yes, amazing please. yes i mean that'd be the best way to do it if they don't do that then you'd have to pretty much like create your whole character before the start of the game anyway like you'd have to go and choose your house and wand and stuff like you wouldn't get another sorting ceremony you know in mm-hmm. the sequel because you're you're already there or they might yeah that could be an option too where like maybe they'll give you an option to import your character and everything that you did in the first game or they might do like you know for people who for some reason, you know, want to play the game in, which I think is kind of like similar in Mass Effect where they like, you can either like, you know, import an existing character or do a new character and they'll ask you a couple of questions, like kind of de- determining like the choices you might've made like in the first game or something like that. And then, then just starting from there without playing that game. So there's lots of ways it could go. Now, one thing I still wish, and I hope they'll change it. I would like to be able to pause the game during the cutscenes. I know oh it's my minor, gosh, but just... seriously, that is like annoying as hell. It is 2023. Yeah. What are we doing not being able... To... This is not Kingdom Hearts 1, people. Okay? Yeah. No. Yeah. You can skip the cutscenes, but I can't pause the game during the cutscene. We don't want to skip scene. them. Yeah. Like, we want to get a snack or check our phone yeah. or go to the bathroom and not get through a whole cutscene yeah. first. Yes. For real. So, I'm like, come on. Please update that. And then, of course, you know, I know there's some changes you can make, like, to your screen and stuff to, like, remove a lot of the quest information, but... I do really want a photo mode. Like, this is the I think game. they said that's coming. Okay. Yeah. I I think be. they said that that's, that's on its way, but I hope so. Because taking screenshots, it's as we've so been doing, is fine and great, but, like, we could if we could take the UI out of mm-hmm. it, that would be cool. Yeah. For real. <laughs> or, you know, even adding filters and whatnot, because, you know, there's certain games where you can you know, add a filter, make it, like, an old 1800-style, like, photograph or something. Like, it would be cool like lots of possibilities there which it seems like a lot of games like that have come out recently like they either automatically come with the photo mode or there's like an update that is not too far from the release date where they add it and so Mm -hmm. i look forward to when that comes out and there'll be even cooler pictures we'll be able to come all right (laughs) (laughs) no that's a problem i'll spend too much long i'll spend too much time in photo mode but yeah it's i like there's just yeah minor things like yeah I want to be able to pause during, yeah, cutscenes. I want to photo mode. Pretty simple. I think there's a lot, you know, going for we're it. Not, we don't feel we're asking for that much. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, please continue on with multiple games. But no, yeah, just with the simple things right now. There's plenty of stuff to enjoy in this game. Great time. If they could add, like, a water spell, like Aguamenti or something, mm. they should do that. There's lots of fire spells. Where's my Where's my True. water spell? very very true good point you get you get like to freeze things that's as close as you get to water nope <laughs> yeah not the same <laughs> not i all. want to blast <laughs> things with water i want pu- puzzles where i get to fill stuff with water mm-hmm. like what the heck man that's fair well maybe that's a spell they can add into a future game maybe maybe i want DLC more silly spells to too i want like the um the tickling charm <laughs> You just run through the hallway and just, like, start hitting people with these... Or, like, these little innocent, like, annoying Pranks. things. Well, yeah, yeah, like, those kinds of things. I want I want more of those. Like, maybe not terribly useful in combat. <laughs> Although, maybe, you know, it could stall your opponent. That's how they're used, you know? Yeah. But they're not going to defeat them. Well, I mean, half your spells or stuff don't aren't really usable in combat anyway. They're just, like, for things you can do in Room of, the, room of Requirement or with Beast and stuff, so... They can add but yeah, they option. do. They do give you lots of extra spells like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Do we have any other final notes about this game? Anything else we would love to discuss? Um, I just, I wish, I wish I wasn't getting into my busy season in school with music festival coming Mm -hmm. up so I could play it all the time and do all the things with it. Mm -hmm. But hey, here we are, adults and whatnot. Yeah. Enjoying it when we have free time though. Yep. And Mm -hmm. plenty of content to keep us going for a while. Absolutely. Well, I think that will do it for us. So listeners... We hope you enjoyed this episode. We hope that we were able to share more information about Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, Let us know if you have been playing this game or if you plan to get it. We'd love to hear from you. As always, please be sure to like or subscribe wherever you listen to this podcast. Share it with a friend. Follow us on our social medias on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at PodDemastered. And as always, too, you can feel free to send us an email if you want to talk about Hogwarts Legacy, any other games, have questions for us, things that you want us to discuss on the podcast, feel free to let us know. You can email us at demasteredpodcast at gmail.com. And once again, thanks so much for listening to this week's episode, and please be sure to tune in the next one. See ya.